Bill asked, uh, 100 gigabyte user mailbox quota exceeded. Dun, dun, dun. This should be like the groundhog. There's a lot of discussion already, and we haven't even finished the question. All right. (laughs) When I look up the mailbox folder uh, statics, I think statistics, and the calendar folder consumes 95 gigabytes, found and deleted duplicate items in user outlook, but still the mailbox size and calendar folder counts remain same in PowerShell. Any idea what I should do further? Yeah, take out your trash. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the hundred Just gigabytes. The I was like, what? Yeah. I had I had a woman that she said she had 90,000 emails in her inbox. And she said she couldn't even delete them because when you delete them, that creates like a quasi temporary. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Before it goes to deleted items. And it, there was no room to even copy those. But yeah, how, what's the easiest way to clean out the garbage, right? I don't know if the Create PowerShell's a new email. The answer. Yeah. Okay. There's a there's a couple of things that you can you can do. The fact that he said it's the calendar that's taking up 95 gig, which means there's attachments in the calendar. So if you actually go into your calendar and you change your view over to a list. And then you go into your view settings and underneath your view settings, you can actually look at the columns. So if you go into your columns um, and under there, if you go all to the all kind of mail, you've got size and you can create a column called size. So, you know, you put the column in and then you'll be able to sort it based on size and you'll be able to see which of the you might find there's only one or two that have got really big potentially attachments to them. And you can actually just delete the couple of items that you see there. It's just one way to be able to organize it. Um, the other thing you can do is around search, which Shari and I, you know, were having a chat about. Right. Yeah. So I always go through a, I have a lot of search folders because, you know, my name is Sherry and I'm a digital hoarder. I have, yeah. you know, I have. <laughs> Hi, Sherry. <laughs> I love it. I, I know. I, could say, I have an all mail folder. I have a, the same. It's like every search, everything for me. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I use, I use search folders and I, in the mm-hmm. desktop version, they don't have them in the web version, but in the desktop version, you can create search folders around certain criteria, like it was sent by a certain person or it's within a certain date range. So I have search folders for things that are older than 12 months. Um, and then I have things for that are over a certain size. And one, one of the out of the box ones is large mail. So not just for your calendar, but also for your emails, where are those attachments? And should those attachments be saved with your email or should have those be moved off to OneDrive, for example? Um, you've got a terabyte of space like 10 times the amount of space in your OneDrive to offload those items um, and get them out of your inbox because obviously it's yeah. causing issues. I love the automate where you have all of your attachments go into your OneDrive so that I then know that I can just delete out anything that's an attachment because I've already got it. It's all, re- all backed up the moment it hits my mailbox. That's what we need to add a link to. I was going to say that. that like, so that's what I do. And so then I can go through and purge through that, but you know, as attachments, rather than dig through email, it's mm-hmm. so much easier to go through and explore view and look at what is this stuff. Now I really don't need those delete mm-hmm. of those or maintain that archive so it's there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it'd be great to be able to provide some guidance to people on how to do that. Yeah, I'm a little bit more of a control freak. I want to like know what's being moved and what's not. So yeah, that's. My, one of my but things, you can always but. set the parameters for that to like uh you know to, to even older than that say things that are you know 18 months or or older or, or whatever then automate that i mean really how often are you going back and searching through content that old but i get it that like the harder personality we all do it to some degree um and, and so that's something that i do you know both i like i go through regularly and purge and clean up within uh, you know, my, well, when I say regularly, so like twice a year or so, um, an email <laughs> and, and Gmail do that. <laughs> it's dedicated. But we <laughs> thoroughly do that and dramatically see it drop down. Um, so it's great to automate that stuff. So then you don't have to think about it. Uh, yeah. So another, yeah. another really good tip is, um, so create processes that where everything isn't necessarily living in email. So one of the tips that I tell is, um, if you are in Outlook, there is a send email to OneNote button. 
And that's like one of my favorite buttons <laughs> because most people, like if you win lottery, your team does is never going to look in your email inbox. I don't care how many gigs your PST file is. They're never going to open that puppy unless they have to. And they do not want to look through your inbox to try to figure out where this thing is. Or how you, you set, organized it. Yeah. <laughs> or how you organized it. <laughs> yeah. what, but if you set a regular um, process of forwarding anything to a OneNote binder where that stuff lives, you can just completely get it out of your email. And that I have found eliminates a lot of stuff in your Outlook anyways. I, See, I, I had a woman at, Share um, a link as well. Share a link to the document <laughs> instead of attaching it. Hey. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This. Yes. I am. Um, I uh, had a woman say, you've changed my life because I showed her that how to archive her emails because she was keeping them by project and the project actually lived somewhere else. It lived in a SharePoint site. So being able to archive all those emails into a OneNote notebook, it's kind of like printing them all out, sticking them in three ring binder and putting it on the shelf. You don't got to look at it. If you ever need to refer to it, it's there. And the beautiful thing about that, which I love that you brought that up, Sharon, is because it actually takes the attachments with it. Yes. Uh, when yes. you send to OneNote, the attachments stay with that file or with that message. And, and they go to the right be, place. Yes. Yeah. And, and then it becomes, a, it's a database, basically. And then uh, not only, here's my other favorite thing. In OneNote, all the content of the attachments is searchable, not just the name yes. of the email. So the, the, if you say widget in the attachment and you search for a widget, you're going to find that item in your OneNote notebook where it will not find it in Outlook as an attachment in an email. So and then people get all nervous because they're like, yeah, but Sharon, what if I want to reply to that email 800 years later? It's cool because if you go into OneNote, you can actually then say send as email and you can ship it right on back out. Yep. And just keep in mind, some of that is desktop version only, not the web version or the, the Windows, what I call the crap app that, that they're getting rid of. <laughs> yeah, the crap app. Uh, the crap. Yes, 2023, I bring on 2023. <laughs> so looking forward to that. It's looking yeah. exciting. Some of the changes I'm that so are happening excited. across one yeah. note. I was on one note call just the other morning and I watch this space. There's some really great stuff happening right across it. I say that that you know if, if you don't know what we're talking about, you know that it's the you know the Windows 10 uh, introduced that the UWP, you know, the yep. yeah, the the Windows version of OneNote is like what were they thinking? They never explained it well. They just they, there's there's no plan. There was just a complete disconnect there, and so they're yeah. writing the ship there. Yeah, I remember being in the, the last. One note. Sorry, I was going to say, I remember being with the OneNote team back in 2018 when they said they were going purely to to the Windows and the whole OneNote. Um, uh, MVPs were sitting there going, what? And of course, it's complete. It take, took till 2023, but they've turned it back around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was going to make the point that the last published desktop version of OneNote yeah. is 2016. That's They're correct. supposed to be coming out with the Office, the 365 version of it so that's always updated. So it doesn't have like a year stamp anymore. But I don't, I think that's next year, right? 2023. That's correct. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, so if correct. you're looking for the no, desktop no version, shipping date. No shipping date yet, but um, yeah, there's some great stuff and in the integration right across the 365, especially into Teams and things like that will be will be good. So.